Solicitors. Rapid Solicitors, sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Accident compensation and medical negligence claims. Welcome to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League Highlight Show here on Sky Sports. We're at the Capital FM Arena, the NIC in Nottingham, for a six and a half thousand sellout. It's been sold out for a fortnight. Why wouldn't it? It's the Nottingham Panthers taking on the Sheffield Steelers. This legendary rivalry in British ice hockey. Two sold out venues on two days in December. Happens every year and you'll get to see the very best and extended highlights of the game here this afternoon. Before that though, I'm going to leave you with another arena game. Brayhead had a very difficult home game against the Cardiff Devils. That's a tough one, eh Chris? Brayhead went into the game in poor form, so desperately seeking a result to get things back on track. They needed an early goal and they got it. A first goal for the club for David Nicoletti. Three minutes, 13 gone from right point. 1-0 Brayhead. But Cardiff came back into the game. First of all, a mistake by Zemlak behind the net. He gave the puck away to Blight. Out in front there was Gimblet, his second goal of his short so far. Cardiff career certainly made a good start to life in Wales. That was 1-1. So things were beginning to turn in the favour of the Devils at this point. And in the second period, they got ahead. A goal right on the doorstep there. Face-off win from Faulkner. And in the end, it was Blight scoring right there in front of Zemlak. A pass from left to right saw goal number three, Phil Hill, with a ninth goal of the season. It was McRae's pass, and Cardiff were enjoying themselves. There was still time for more action, this time shorthanded, this time from right to left. Hill there with his tenth goal of the season. Bray had reduced the deficit when Walker scored on the rebound to make it 4-2. Stuart McRae then scored on the power play at 58.05 to make it 5-2. Cardiff, and the scoring was wrapped up by Mark Smith in the slot there. Brayhead 2, Cardiff 6. The Flyers came to the NIC hoping to emulate the Edinburgh Caps, of course, who won on a recent visit to Nottingham. And as for the Panthers themselves, looking to extend that lead at the top of the table, beginning to open up a gap, although the teams behind them have some games in hand. First period action and short-handed, Benedict comes away, does the hard work left-hand side into the offensive zone and scores a sixth goal of the season and 10.47 gone. Nottingham have the advantage at the National Ice Centre. Still in the first period, Nottingham on the power play laying seeds to Pitton's goal and they move this one around nicely, they're patient, they take their time, they use the space well. Werner has one shot, it's charged down, he has room for another it's a clever pass to Ling, left circle, 2-0 Nottingham there at the end of two periods and they certainly have the advantage in the game. To period two now and five trying to clear the zone and they can't do so, Nottingham battling hard and Lakovic wins the puck on the backhand and then another backhand shot from Gallivan in the 11th of the season for the improving Patrick Gallivan. Nottingham 3-0 advantage now. 27-46. Still the goals continue to go Nottingham's way in period two, but not before. Probably the goal of the game. A great move up the ice, Chamot and Pitten involved, and Haynes scores a 16th goal of the year at 34-24. So that at that stage made the game 3-1 to Nottingham and Fife maybe thought they could stage a comeback. But Nottingham come forward once more. Myers involved, takes a shot towards the net. It's picked up right side by David Clark. He comes away, goes right to left, and his shot looks like Wilson is a judge to have the final touch. Clark shoots, 
Wilson is created with his second goal for the club. So at the end of two periods, it's 4-1 to the Nottingham Panthers, and they're very much in control. Neat move up the ice from one end to the other, and the cover gone by Graham, who showed it with his hand, a 16th goal of a now prolific season for the Nottingham Panthers top forward. Benedict and Weaver getting the assist, and 1.39 gone in period three. It is 5-1 Nottingham and they surely are home and dry. Nottingham laying siege in this third period. In fact, they had 46 shots on goal throughout the game. But when it came out of the zone, it didn't matter. Nottingham went again. Fox, what a move away from the defenceman. And Josh Ward scores. Not many shifts in the game for the Nottingham youngster. And he gets goal number six, a first of the season. His teammates love that moment. They mob him. And Nottingham have a five-goal advantage at 6-1. An incident on the boards right in the corner of the picture. You didn't really see it, but it resulted in a fight. It is Calvary against Weaver. Not known for his fighting Weaver. Calvary getting the rights in, and then he wrestles Weaver to the ground. But Weaver sticking up there for his teammates. And that one came to a close, but certainly excited the fans to see Weaver in fighting action. So 6-1 Nottingham at that stage of the game. And coming up to just past the midway point of the third period. And Nottingham start another wave of attacks. They come forward down the left-hand side. And Francis and Gallivan this time, they set up the move. It's Clark, first of all, who has the shot. But it comes back out the zone. First of all, it's Benedict. And as I said, Francis and Gallivan are the players that are credited with the assist. First of all, Francis, then it's Gallivan left-hand side. He waits, he waits, he waits for the room. Back to Francis, who comes out in front to see Graham. And Graham scores the final goal. Nottingham 7, five flyers 1. It doesn't matter how you dress it up, folks. The Brayhead clan have got problems. They're in trouble right now. That was a convincing victory on the road by the Cardiff Devils. Whilst the Five Flyers, they go down to the Nottingham Panthers, seven goals to one. Nottingham doing what Nottingham do best, scoring goals, entertaining, plenty of flair. And if they sense you're a little bit weak, they're going to destroy you. And that's what they did to Todd Dutium's team. Well, Nottingham's opponents tonight, the Sheffield Steelers, they had a tough game of their own last Saturday in Hull against the Stingrays. How would that one go, Chris? The Stingrays welcome the Steelers to town. First period action, power play for the visitors. And Legree and Limbright set up Stevenson all alone at the back door. And 5.04 gone, Stevenson scores his sixth goal of the season. On the replay, you'll see that there was nothing much that Ben Bounds could do about it. Went down for the initial shot, it never came. Went across in front of the net, and there was Stevenson to score. Silverthorne then at the other end, lovely pass, and it's set up then by Tendler for Osman to score goal number 16 of such a great year for him. Again, look at the replay, slightly mishits it, and DeCaro nearly manages to claw it back, can't do so, 1-1 hockey game. Just over a minute and a half later, Ferguson and Stevenson combined, and Fatter goes in at the back door. The second defenseman to score on the night for the visitors. 10.45 gone. Tries to make the kick saved as Bounds can't do so. 2-1 Sheffield. They break free once more. Lovely free-flowing move. Ferguson and Tate involved this time, and that made it 3-1. Legree with the goal. And that is a 3-1 first period lead. In period two, on the doorstep, Osman. He makes it a one-goal game. A 17th of the year, a second of the night, into the corner. It's very much tense going into period three. But on the doorstep, Ashley Tate gets goal number four, the final goal of the night. All two, Sheffield four. A very valuable two points then for Ryan Finnerty and his Sheffield Steelers side. When we come back after the break, you'll be able to see how they got on on Sunday. Game of the weekend was the Steelers and the Belfast Giants. We've also got highlights of Coventry taking on the Nottingham Panthers. Don't go anywhere. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports.
Welcome back to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League Highlight Show here on Sky Sports. Straight into hockey action, two crackers for you. Sky Dome Arena where the informed Panthers were taking on the Coventry Blaze. They were feeling a little bit sorry for themselves. No Sam Smith and as we said before the break, no Shea Guthrie. Before that though, the game of the weekend was at the Motor Point Arena. The Steelers taking on the Belfast Giants. Chris Ellis. A top of the table clash at the Motor Point Arena and some big hits. That there set the tone for the rest of the game. There's more of that to follow. But the team that was smiling first were the Belfast Giants. Keith behind the net, he works hard, he's strong. Out in front for Garside and the final touch is from Daryl Lloyd. A ninth goal of the season and the Belfast Giants ahead in the first period at 16.31. You'll see from the replays that there's deflections involved in this one. The second replay, the slow-mo, shows it better. Shot from Gar's side, it's saved, it comes off the arm of De Caro, but on to Lloyd, who's right there, right on the doorstep. 1-0 first period lead then for the Belfast Giants. Then Gertzen and Lindwright combine, the Steelers come forward, and right on the doorstep, again, it's a deflected goal, and right there is Simon Ferguson for his first goal for the club. 1-0 becomes 1-1. Right out in front, the puck is loose. There's chances for the Giants to clear. Phillips there nearly got it away, but the Steelers are level. They are thrilled. It's a 1-1 scoreline, and that was the way it was at the end of two periods. But there was more action in the second period in terms of feistiness. A mid-ice hit there saw Lloyd go to ground, and then a number of players coming together Look at this, all sorts of pushing and shoving. No real big punches in this fight, but what did happen was David Phillips was thrown out for leaving the bench. So 1-1 one, one at this stage into the third period. Early stages as well, nice move up the ice. Keith and Sandrock involved, and it is Lloyd with the tenth goal of the season, a second of the night, and at 41-45, it is 2-1 to the Belfast Giants in a crucial game at the top of the table and the visitors are celebrating. They go to the bench and they celebrate with their teammates still on the bench. Still more action though to come, Sheffield coming forward, chance for Ferguson out in front and the Giants living dangerously at one end. Then another big hit there on the boards, that one Roberts got a boarding minor. But that was the end of the scoring, final score in the Motor Point Arena. Sheffield 1, Belfast 2. Nottingham arrived in the Sky Dome with nine wins from their last ten matches, while Coventry were on a run of one win in their last four. Strong work from Bruce Graham set up Ling for his 17th goal of the season for 1-0 Nottingham at 1.49. Then Gallivan and Fox were involved in a great move that saw Lakovic score his 10th of the season, that coming at 6.23. And then 21 seconds later, D-man Werner. Eric Werner from behind the net, the wraparound out in front and near side, and Nottingham were leading 3-0, 6.44 gone. Matthew Myers coming forward here. Bit of rough and tumble in front of the net. Bit of talking going on, and then you see Kelsey Wilson come in. He's not happy with what was going on there, so Egner and Wilson have a fight. This was the best fight of the night, actually. There's three fights tonight to show you. And this one was a decent one to start off with, some good punches being thrown. Then they started to wrestle for a while, got their punches going once more, and that one was over, but a terrific fight between the pair of them. Still more scoring in the first period for Nottingham. It was Ling all alone in the slot, he wasn't marked, and he scores goal number four. So Nottingham led by 4-0 at the end of the first period. Into period two and the scoring continued. Graham there, goal number 18 of the year for him. 5-0 Nottingham. And then the first of a couple of bouts for Guy Lapine. First with Olsen. This one really was a wrestling match. Neither of them could get their hands free to throw any punches. And Olsen falls on top of Lapine. And that one really didn't get going. So 5-0 Nottingham at this stage. Watch this for a goal. Link shapes to shoot, pulls it back. And there is Kelsey Wilson. 6-0 to Nottingham. 
and their fans were absolutely in dreamland. That was the score at the end of two periods. I said there was to be another fight for Guy Lapine. Here he comes face to face with Egana. This time Lapine gets some short ones in underneath on the right side and then falls on top of Egana. So two fights for Lapine, two for Egana. Nottingham at that stage 6 0. Then a backhand pass from Gallivan was beautiful. Francis making it 7 0. And then there was still time for another Nottingham goal to complete the heaviest home defeat in the Elite League era for the Coventry Blades. Final score Coventry 0, Nottingham 8. A huge two points then for the Belfast Giants, a huge crucial victory over the Sheffield Steelers. But what about that at the Sky Dome in Coventry? Without Guffrey, they get beat by eight goals to nil by the Nottingham Panthers. Time for more action now as we head up to Dundee and go down south to Cardiff. Chris? There were a number of thrilling games across the festive period in the Elite League, none more so than the Scottish Derby in Dundee with the Five Flyers in town. First period action, and it was a great first period end to end, but one goal in it. Bagran and Ryanen working hard to set up Wirral for his 13th goal of the season. You can see how he makes a move on the netminder to put the puck into a gaping net. Period coming to a close now, and it seemed as though it was going to pass without any more incident. Then it boils over. For well, the players coming onto the ice, as they would at the end of the period. But you see the five Flyers players start to come on first. And keep your eye on Jason Pitton. Moves towards Baxter, wants to have a word with him. Gregor Mizzen, the linesman, just takes him to one side. But keep your eyes still on 71. He's still trying to get towards that melee. Players are beginning to pair off. Now Pitton comes into the crowd and he throws a sucker punch, not seen at the time but it resulted in a three-match ban for Pitton once the tape was reviewed for supplementary discipline by the disciplinary committee. All sorts of players now getting involved. There was players thrown out from the five flyers. McAlpine ended up with a game misconduct, so that was him out of the game for the rest of the match. And of course, certainly Dundee having their fair share of penalties as well, as you'd expect. It was Krantz who initially went on a boarding penalty and that was downgraded, again, a review by the disciplinary committee. This was a great fight going on here. Baxter against McAlpine, the two of them going toe-to-toe -to -toe for a time. Of course, all the officials were in the bigger melee, which we don't see at the time. And it was left to a couple of players from either side just to take that one and stop that one from happening. Now, 1-0 Dundee at the end of the first period. And the five flyers level in the second period. Chameau on the doorstep, power play at 23-58. Still second period action, and the Stars went ahead once more. Ryan and Bagman setting up Bowen for a seventh of the season, that one on the power play. So 2-1 to the home side. Thrilling second period, just like the first. Not so much feistiness in this one. And that was a great move. Chamon and Haynes setting up Pitton to score. So 2-2 hockey game going into period three. There's still plenty of drama to come, I can tell you. For the first time in the game, the Flyers led Pitton on a wraparound. And what a game he had had. A sucker punch wasn't seen. He then scored two goals, and then he was thrown out for boarding for this incident here. He gets chucked from the game. It's been a dramatic night for Jason Pitton. A feisty night for him. So one goal advantage for the visitors. But Bowen scores from left point. It's 3-3 through traffic. And we see the game all tied up. And we go to penalties. First stop is Bobby Shamo. He goes low and scores. 1-0 the advantage for the Flyers. The save is made there by Pitten and Reinen. Didn't score. So at the other end, Casey Haynes has a chance to put the noses right in front for five. He couldn't do so. Neither could Mike Wirral. So Derek Keller could win it now. Backhand shot and he scores. And the Flyers win. Dundee three. 5-4. The Stingrays arrived in the big blue tent with one win in their last seven. Not a great place to go to face an informed Cardiff side who always enjoy playing in the big blue tent. First period action sees a fight. New boy for the Cardiff Devils, Gimblet. He's going head to head and toe to toe with Ryan Ham. Eager to impress his new supporters. The Devils in their festive green kit. It's Gimblet who goes first. Down goes Hand. Looks like the linesmen are going to get involved to stop it, but Hand gets back up and wants to go. No big punches thrown at the moment. Surely this one's about to explode. 
And there they go, some right from Gimblet, and Ham goes down again, but Ham's a tough man, gets straight back up and starts to just try and get his Ham free. The linesman here paying close attention to this fight, Sam Mottam and Kieran O'Hallow, and Ham then starts to get some right, and then Gimblet over the top with some right, and Ham goes down on top. That's a terrific fight. Two men really going toe-to-toe -to -toe and enjoying a big bat. So no goals at that stage. When did the first goal in the first period come? There was only one goal in the first period. It was a power play goal. Cardiff working the walls well, working it on the right side, then the left side, and it goes out from behind the net. It's back and goal behind the net. And then he gets the final touch out in front. The assist going to Blight and to Smith at 10.31. Cardiff in the lead in the big blue tent. So 1 0 at the end of one period, and that was a scoreline at the end of two periods. No goals in the second session, so to period three, and it was a tight encounter throughout. And coming forward now are the Stingrays. Good move in front of the net there by Tendler, and then it's worked by Silverthorne. Loved her with the other assist, and Tendler gets the final touch to that one. A 20th goal of a great season. It is 1 1. Now, First face off of overtime. All Stingrays coming forward. They get a chance right hand side. But what you can't do is leave someone like Matt Faulkner alone. And when Ozer plays the puck to Blight, he sends it to Faulkner. And the leading goal scorer gets goal number 24 of the season to win it for the home side. Cardiff 2, All Stingrays 1. A feisty little game in Dundee and a very valuable two points for the five flyers whilst in Cardiff. A great effort by the Hall Stingrays, but again, the Cardiff Devils are the team that come out with two points. Well, I'm here inside the NIC, as you can see, the Nottingham Panthers bench, the Sheffield Steelers bench. And I'm joined by a man who has sat on both of them, Danny Myers. And Danny, for how many years you've spent Christmas Day looking forward to this fixture? What from a different angle? How different was it yesterday when you were tucking into your turkey, thinking, whoa, tomorrow I'm a Sheffield Steelers in Nottingham on Boxing Day? Just uh, pretty much the same. It's two points on the line, that's all I'm after. I mean, uh, when I was playing for the Panthers, it was just to get those two points and send our supporters home happy with a, with a good Christmas present. The only difference now is that I drive to this rink in a, in a different car, wearing a different jersey, but I still want the two points for our supporters. The Nottingham Panthers are in fine form right now. They're the form team in the league. They're not just beating teams, they're beating teams convincingly. What do the Sheffield Steelers have to do this afternoon here to prevent Nottingham going home with those two points? Well, I think the, uh, the start's key. I mean, when this crowd gets behind this team, it's, it's pretty hard. And um, the previous game that we won here in the league, we, uh, we got off to a good start and we held them at bay. And uh, the Panthers are in a different situation and they weren't playing particularly well, but right now they are. They are, without doubt, the form team. The scoring goals are not conceding many, so it's going to be a tough task for us tonight. But in that dressing room, we still feel confident with each other. Um, we feel like we had a, a very good performance against Belfast without getting the reward, so hopefully we can have a good performance tonight with a reward. Speaking with Ryan Finnerty, he commented on 54 hits against the Dundee Stars. He commented on 62 hits against the Belfast Giants. Is it a new Sheffield Steelers philosophy over the last couple of weeks that you're a lot more physical, a lot more direct, a lot more in your face? Absolutely. I think at times this year we've struggled with our identity, what team we wanted to be. Did we want to be an offensive team with lots of flair? Were we a defensive team? We've kind of tried things out and things you know, haven't worked for one reason or another. But I really feel over the last couple of weeks we have found our identity. And I think we're actually going back to the way that many people view a Sheffield Steelers team. Very good defensively, very physical and very hard to beat. And uh, that's the way that we want to be for the rest of the season. Talking about identity, you were just telling me a lovely story about your two sons in Sheffield Steelers tops on Christmas morning. I understand you've already had a pre-game skate, but one with a bit of a difference this morning. Yeah, it was a little bit different this morning. Uh, I bought the two boys uh, some hockey goals for... Uh, for Christmas because they've been using the laundry basket as a goal so I bought some goals and um, I bought them the Mighty Ducks trilogy as well so uh, as you can imagine it was chaos last night and uh, this morning um, I'm sure it's going to be rough tonight in this uh, in this arena but I can tell you what it was pretty rough between me and my boys this morning in the lounge so uh, hopefully uh, hopefully we can come out of the two points and um, you know, for our supporters and our organisation, we need these wins and um, you know it's the same for the Panthers and it's all set up for you know what's going to be a great game. Well, let Danny head back down to the Sheffield Steelers dressing room. Time for a quick copper, but that's all. Get back soon. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports.
Welcome back to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League Highlight Show here on Sky Sports. Come down to the foyer, fans are starting to get into the building. It's the Panthers versus the Sheffield Steelers. I've got Anthony here from Nottingham. And Anthony, Boxing Day, must have been many a Boxing Day since you've been so confident. Your team playing so well right now. Panthers are playing very well. I can say confidence. You know, we've seen Panthers top of the league and then they've had the uh, Christmas slip, but we are playing extremely well at the moment. So. We're confident that we're going to be there or thereabouts. Anthony, you were just telling me you were born in 1960. I admit, you look a lot older. Yeah, However, you. you haven't seen the Panthers win in your lifetime. This is surely the best chance in recent times. We have a good chance this year. We, uh, like the other night, we uh, went to Coventry. An 8-0 win was superb. Belfast 6-1 at home. Those results make you think that this could be Panthers' year, but we've got to keep it going. We are playing very well. Keep it going. There's every chance. Stuart, for a Sheffield Steelers fan, there's nothing worse than the thoughts of the Nottingham Panthers winning the league. The Sheffield Steelers have got to come into this building and win tonight. They've done that before, haven't they? They have on many different occasions. Uh, fingers crossed if they play like they played against Belfast. I can see them coming out of it with a win. The Nottingham Panthers, super sexy Nelson hockey, very flair, very offence orientated. But the Sheffield Steelers have changed their style in the last couple of games. A lot more physical. Are they going to have to be physical tonight? I think so. Uh, I believe that they are. I uh, think as long as they pass to, literally pass to stick, that they'll be fine. OK, well, prediction time. Anthony? I think the Panthers will win, but I can't give you a score. OK, Stuart? I'm going to go 2-1 Steelers. 2-1 to the Sheffield Steelers. Time for the action. It's Boxing Day. Six and a half thousand tickets sold out. Gets no bigger, gets no better. Go on, Chris. Talk us through it. The Boxing Day encounter between these two sides, surely the most eagerly anticipated fixture for Nottingham and Sheffield. It was another cracker. There were 6,999 people in the NIC and Nottingham went ahead on the power play. Weaver to Ling, Ling to Clark, who is in space and he scores his seventh goal of the season. 3.52 gone, it's Nottingham one, Sheffield nil. Now the Panthers have scored at 25% on the power play in front of their own supporters this season. One in every four then, so it won't surprise you to see that goal number two also came on the power play. Great move in front of the netminder by Beckett. It was set up with Ling's pass to Fox, and Fox found Beckett and left the netminder to Caro sprawling. And it was a 2-0 first period lead for the Nottingham Panthers. To period two, and this is where it got feisty. A controversial incident on the boards. Look at the top of your screen. Panthers work in the corner, and it is with Graham, and he gets a hit by Limpright. First impression, maybe a check to the head. Andy Carson called no penalty, play continued. Nottingham had a couple of chances on net, but when the officials realized that Graham was taking his time to get to his feet, play was called down. And look on the slow-mo replay, Probably not a check to the head, maybe boarding, but nothing was given and Graham made his way off the ice, but it was good for Nottingham that he was OK to continue. So that was the start of the feistiness and now some battling in the right-hand corner behind the net of Craig Kowalski. Just real tussle, real hustle and bustle and all players getting involved, Werner and Myers for Nottingham and the Steelers try and come away with the puck. They can't do so, they're kept in the zone by Nottingham trying to win back possession. Now the original call there, as the hand goes up by Carlson, sees a number of players get involved. It was Myers who was originally being called, and all sorts of players now getting involved. It ended with three from Nottingham and one from Sheffield in the box. Kelsey Wilson trying to get Limpright to fight, and he doesn't, continues the punches. The linesman break this one up, and then pairing up a Gertsen and Guy Lapine. The Nottingham Panthers in Forza. And the two of them go toe to toe and start to fight and trade blows. It's a good old scrap. Gertsen goes in and it continues. And then Lapine goes down on top. Now Lapine got two minutes for roughing, five minutes for fighting, and two plus ten for the instigating penalty. So he had 19 minutes of penalty and will be sitting in the box. With Matthew Myers going in the box and Kelsey Wilson for Nottingham and only the one for the Steelers. It meant a five-on-three power play for the visitors. And then there'll be four minutes of five-on-four. We're on the five-on-three. Jeff McQueen from the top of the right circle makes it a one-goal game. You'll see how close from the replay that Kowalski came to keeping it out. Just tries to claw it back. Can't do so. Sheffield have it back to a one-goal game at the NIC in period two. And we are alive, alive, oh. Certainly set for a thrilling finish in front of the biggest crowd at the time 
of the season in the Elite League. Linesman takes a tumble, that gets a cheer from the crowd. All well, the officials getting involved in the rough and tumble as well. So with it being a one-goal game, it was ultra, ultra close. And the next goal could well be crucial. Bit of push and shove in front of the net. A lot going in there. Frank goes in. He makes his presence felt. Threatened to boil over even more than it had. But never did once more. But the players just being separated by the officials. Now into the third period. Saw more action in front of the net. Frank driving the net. And instead of getting his puck over the line from his shot, he had to jump onto the net to evade Craig Kowalski. There he goes and just mounts the net and just has a little lie down. So 2-1 still. Nottingham coming forward, though, looking to get the goal that would make it 3-1. And surely game over. Lakovic into the offensive zone, takes a shot. But De Caro closes the door. And then going down is Francis. Stays down for a moment. Again, the players just have a word with each other. No punches thrown, but certainly Nottingham and Sheffield keen to make their presence known to each other. We have an empty net situation. David Clark, surely he's going to score. Oh, he fans on the puck with that empty net. The goal was gaping, and could that be crucial? Sheffield trying to clear the zone, trying to get the puck away. Nottingham with Graham trying to get it back towards the net. But Sheffield, they come out. Nottingham go for a line change and the Steelers come forward. It's dumped in, right-hand side, and then it comes left-hand side. It takes a bad bounce off the boards, but Nottingham clear. And then coming forward are the Steelers. And who's that advancing in an offensive position? It's Danny Myers to score his first goal for the club against his former club. To the shootout with the game ending 2-2. The first goal goes in, it's Limpride. Werner, he scores, so 1-1 after one penalty each. Now it's Drew Fatter for the Sheffield Steelers, denied by Kowalski. So Jordan Fox comes up the ice, up the other end. He scores and Nottingham have the advantage. Lugui needs to score. He deeps. That's a lovely penalty shot. There's plenty of great penalties on show in this shootout. Francis can win it. No, off the inside of the post. So back the other way. Sudden death now. And Limbright does score. Can Werner score again? Yes, he can. We're still level. Drew Fatter now has a chance, goes very wide. That's a terrific goal from Fatter. So now Jordan Fox, a low deke. We're still going. It's now a chance for Legui. He loses control. So Francis has a chance to win it once more. So reliable normally in the shootout, but he can't score that time. We go back the other end for Limpright. And Limpright is denied a pad save and then wide. So can Werner score? His third in a row, he scores, and Nottingham take the extra point. What a thriller. The final score, Panthers three, Steelers two. Emotions after that one, Ryan? That was tough. It's always tough to lose in a, in a penalty shot uh, situation, but... You know, I thought we, we put ourselves in that situation. Uh, we didn't. Uh, we kind of came out and watched them play for the first 20. You know, when, when you're standing around against a team this offensive, you're, you're going to take penalties. We took four minors, and then they scored two power play goals, and, and that's the difference. You know, second and third period, we uh, we got our legs under it, and uh, I thought uh, guys played better. You know, I didn't. I, I thought some guys didn't have the legs, didn't have the, the jump they, they normally have. Um, for whatever reason, the, the two days off or, or whatnot. But, you know, I, I thought uh, we got stronger as the game went on, but we never really peaked to, to where we need to be. And like I said, we uh, great to see Danny Myers scoring a goal here to tie it up with 17 seconds left. And we had plenty of chances to win it in shootout. But, you know, once you get there, it's a coin flip. And, you know, they, they probably deserve the two, and, and we'll, we'll take the one, and, and we turn our attention to tomorrow. What do you have to do differently in uh, Sheffield on uh, on Thursday? I think we proved five on five when we when we press them that that they struggle uh, with our forecheck and we just didn't establish that in the first period. We didn't establish our forecheck. We were watching them come through the neutral zone with speed and we were getting sticks on them, getting called. So, you know, I think we we got to get back to getting that puck deep in behind their the, in behind their demon and going to work here, um, banging bodies and and having that that F uh, F one F two support tighter right now. The, tonight it was too gapped out and they were uh, they were able to uh, they were able to sustain our, our pressure and come out with the puck so tomorrow I think uh, you know obviously I think guys will they'll be a, guys will be better I know my guys will be better tomorrow you know I think the guys uh, some of the guys who had an off night off night tonight will be our best players tomorrow and that's the way it has to be and I think we look forward to it and you know if we can get three out of four points this weekend we'd, we'd be happy with that. Corey that game had a bit of everything didn't it? 
Yeah, I thought it was a, a good game, good spectacle for the fans. We came out and initiated, dictated in the first period, and then uh, I think we came out a little bit flat in the second period, and, and obviously Sheffield, you know, I thought they played a lot better. Um, they, they were much more physical, uh, moved their feet. They worked very hard tonight, so uh, all in all, I thought it was a pretty fair result. I thought uh, you know we gave up a little bit towards the end. That last goal hurt us, but... Uh, you know, and all in all, when you're at the top, you, you drop a point. It's, you know, I guess, you, or you give away a point. It's not as big a deal as when you're chasing. So, um, it's nice to be at the top of the pile now, and and uh, everyone else has to catch us. So we got our two. Emotions when Davy Clark had the shot at the empty net and fell to score. Yeah, that happens. It. Uh, I thought. I thought their their defense guy. Uh, he went down and, and blocked the lane really well. That's a tough tough play. I don't know who it was, but uh, he made himself real big, which is uh, really hard to do. And, and David just missed his shot. So I'm sure he'd take it back. Talk to us now about uh, going into Sheffield again on Thursday, and what you expect different from that game. Well, I hope we play a little bit better. I don't think uh, we were sparkling tonight. We weren't as efficient as we normally are. We didn't move the puck. Uh, fast enough, but but uh, all in all, it was a it was a good win. We know uh, it is tougher to win in there, obviously, than it is in in our building. They're always always tough, a good good side, but uh, you know they they want to make the game all about work ethic and and uh, obviously work harder than everybody else. But uh, we know if we work hard or harder than them, then uh, we've got a real good chance to win because we've got the skill. And if I'd have given you this position in September, you'd have surely taken it. You, you stand in a great position right now, don't you? And most certainly, we're we're, uh, we're a team right now who's uh, fairly confident. We got great goaltending, uh, solid, solid D core at the moment, and, and uh, three lines of forwards who are all capable of, of scoring at any moment. So uh, we're we're quite a threat. Every couple of pressure moments there, you score three in the shootout. One was to save the game. The next one to win it. Yeah, um, yeah. There's pressure, you know. Um, it was an important win for us. Um, but you know, shootouts are big. You gotta, you gotta win a shootout. So um, it was a big win for us. Packed house as well. Everybody cheering you. I must be a great feeling inside when that winning goal goes in. Yeah, um, you know, the atmosphere was unbelievable in here. Um, the, the support from our fans was, you know, uh, uh, we feed off the, you know, them making noise and everything like that. And they really did show their support tonight, and uh, we thank them a lot. Okay, talk us through the goal. Such a crucial moment. David Clark misses the empty net, and how you saw it from there? Well. I blacked out to be honest. And I think if you ask any of my ex teammates or current teammates, I think they all must have blacked out as well. It was uh I just jumped on the ice. So we have been we've been short staffed all game. Obviously Ferguson was out and we haven't replaced uh, Shields yet and um, there were some real tired legs out there and I felt fresh, you know, towards the end of the game and um, Fats and, and uh, Roddy came off and it was just my turn to, to go out there and uh, just kind of sort of play develop and it was an unbelievable pass by Limp right and uh, lucky enough just got my stick on it and uh, my good friend Craig Krawski in the handshake was none too pleased. He didn't realise that I scored it, so he was a little miffed that I scored. But uh, it, was a, it was a big point for us, and um, if we can get the two points tomorrow, we'll take a three-point weekend. OK, I was just going to say to you, what did you take away from this game and you take into the Motor Point Arena on Thursday? Things that we did wrong and things that we done right. Um, Such as? The first period gave them way too much respect. We wanted to have a good start. We didn't have a good start. We wanted to stay out of the box. We couldn't stay out of the box two power play goals for the Panthers and we really dug ourselves in a hole to be honest. Yeah, I don't want to take anyway anything away from the Panthers. They were good but God, we didn't help ourselves at all and we spoke about it at the end of the first and I think we just gave them too much respect. I mean the score lines that have been putting up lately was were pretty frightening and they did come out fast but you know once the game settled down the second and third period we got back into it. There's no doubt Johnny DeCaro had a great game for us and we're going to build on that now and uh, I mean Teams have been getting blown out by Nottingham lately, so the fact that we've taken to a penalty shootout in their own building will give us a lot of confidence. And that's why 15,000 people will watch these two teams over the Christmas period. An incredible game, a fantastic shootout, and a thoroughly well-deserved two points for the Nottingham Panthers that sees them stay top of the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League. Time for a break now, and when we come back, another big rivalry. We're down at the big blue tent in Cardiff, where Paul Thompson was taking his Coventry Blaze. You don't want to miss that one either. See you after the break. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Welcome back to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League Highlight Show here on Sky Sports, where to be honest, 
We're still catching our breath after a fantastic game of hockey. Not 60, but 65 minutes of first period that saw the Nottingham Panthers dominant as they went on four power plays, scoring on two occasions. Was the game out of reach? No, it wasn't, because the Sheffield Steelers came back in the second and third. And what a way for the former Nottingham Panthers captain, Danny Myers, to tie the game. 17.4 seconds remaining when he scores his first Sheffield Steelers goal to earn the Steelers a very valuable point. And then we go into overtime, then we go into a penalty shot shootout and if you watch our uh, highlight shows every week you'll know that Francis is the best penalty shot shooter in the league he misses his two Eric Werner scores on not once not twice but three occasions to earn the points for the Nottingham Panthers a very valuable and well-deserved two points indeed well down in the big blue tent could the Cardiff Devils and the Coventry Blaze give us something similar Chris Ellis will talk us through this one Coventry's downfall this season has been their road form, while the Devils are always good at home. And they were certainly the ones looking up the table, third at the moment, looking at second and first now, rather than behind them. First period action and the visitors on the power play, working it well, they're patient, and involved in this move was shoot to Bolesky, and his shot was tipped in by Cameron. Attempt of the season, 1-0 Coventry after the first period. Now to period two, and a stranger goal you're never likely to see. Watch how it's made and how it's built up. Involved in the move from back to front are plenty of Coventry players, but it's not about the move, it's about the shot and how it goes in. Olsen with the shot, it's deflected in the air. Where's the puck? No one knows where it is. Has it gone behind the net? No, it's gone into the back of the net. And Coventry celebrate, Cardiff are bemused. But referee Michael Higgs saw that it went up vertically and into the back of the net. Still in the second period, power play for the visitors, and they go 3-0 ahead. Domish with a second goal of an injury hit season from left side. Bayrak and Egner with the assist. So that's 3-0 at the end of two periods. What a terrific performance by the Coventry Blaze so far. Cardiff needed to score early in period three if they were to get back into the game. And they had a power play opportunity and working hard on the right-hand side, Chris Blight is involved, Gimblet too as well, and they just move it around nicely until the space out in front, and the goal is scored there by Mark Smith, a third of the season in the right circle, and he makes it 3-1. Still over 15 minutes to go in the game, so anything could happen, and the Cardiff Devils in the big blue tent had got their fans alive. But breaking forward left-hand side is Cameron, and he slots in his second of the night and 11th of the season. Final score, Cardiff 1, Coventry 4. We say it every week, don't we? The toughest barn to go and win in, and the Coventry Blaze found a way to win in the big blue tent. And coming from that 8-0 defeat by the Nottingham Panthers only a few days ago. Congratulations to the Blaze team. They'll be delighted on their way back up the M42. Right, you've seen all the highlights from all of the games. Now let's take a look and a recap of all the scores. We started off on Friday the 21st of December with the Belfast Giants beating the Coventry Blaze by two goals to one. On Saturday the 22nd of December, the Hall Stingrays 2, the Sheffield Steelers 4, the Nottingham Panthers 7, the Five Flyers 1, and the Brayhead Clan 2, the Cardiff Devils 6. Edinburgh Capitals 5-2 victorious over the Dundee Stars. Flip forward 24 hours and on the 23rd of December, the Cardiff Devils 2, the Hall Stingrays 1, and the Dundee Stars 3, the Five Flyers 4. At the Motor Point Arena in Sheffield, the Steelers went down 2-1 to one to the Belfast Giants. And what about that for a thumping victory? Eight goals to nil. The Coventry Blaze going down to the Panthers. Here on Boxing Day, the Nottingham Panthers in a penalty shot shootout win. 3-2 to two over the Sheffield Steelers. And in the big blue tent in Cardiff. Cardiff Devils won, the Coventry Blaze 4. So taking a look at the two conferences after all of those games over the Christmas period. Pretty much as you were. I told you the Edinburgh Capitals and the Five Flyers though, they're moving slowly up their conference and slowly up the Elite League table as well. The Nottingham Panthers though dominant in the Erdhardt division. And if we throw all the uh, two tables together, let's take a look at the league standings. You'll see that the Nottingham Panthers are going into the New Year's break with an advantage over the Belfast Giants. Sheffield, Cardiff, Coventry, and then that gap to the Brayhead clan. But look at that fight and that battle. Who's going to make the playoffs? Remember, it's the top eight that make the postseason. 
Well, that's the Christmas period over, but folks, there are still many great ice hockey games to see up until the new year and, of course, until the end of March. As ever, we suggest that you go and take one in in person. Some crackerjack fixtures coming up starting on Saturday, the 29th of December. So on Saturday, we are back here at the NIC in Nottingham as the Panthers take on the Dundee Stars at 7 o'clock. The Brayhead clan taking on the Edinburgh Capitals. That is just a huge game for Jordan Kristanovic and his team. 7 o'clock face-off in Glasgow. Belfast taking on the Hull Stingrays also at 7. Flip forward to the 30th of December, Dundee versus Cardiff at 6.30. Fife versus Brayhead at 6.30. And Sheffield Steelers taking on the Coventry Blaze at 5 p.m. Monday the 31st of December, New Year's Eve, Edinburgh Capitals taking on the Five Flyers and on New Year's Day, the Coventry Blaze taking on the Sheffield Steelers at the Skydome Arena, face off there at 6 o'clock. You'll be able to see all the goals, all the action in next week's show. That's Friday the 4th of January, Sky Sports 4 at 8pm. Well, wow. What a game here in Nottingham. What a Christmas period. What a New Year period that's going to see the Nottingham Panthers at the top of the tree, top of the elite ice hockey league. You don't need me to remind you, 1956 since the Nottingham Panthers have won a league title. But they are odds-on favourites to win the 2012-13 Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League. Can Corey Nelson deliver where so many others have failed? It's looking very likely as we head into the new year. Thanks for watching tonight. Have a great new year, folks. We'll see you next time around. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports.